Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the Lord word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. You may be seated. Can you turn it back on, Ruth? There you go. Uh, let, let, let me tell you again, so that uh, I want to make sure you can understand this, because the Lord really troubled my heart when I read this, and I realized I realized some things deep within me. Uh, it says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. There's a time in your life where you didn't know who he was. You didn't know what he meant to you. You didn't know what his purpose in your life was. And I, I'm here to tell you today that there are a whole lot of people like that now. But they know they know that, the, that there is a Lord. They'll, they'll say, oh, I, I know this or I, I know that. But as far as you really knowing the Lord, there's, there's a difference in me knowing Cabro and me knowing Cabro. There's a difference to me saying I know my wife Ruth and me saying I really know Ruth. Samuel was Samuel was a little fellow and his mama had promised to dedicate his his, his life and, and his world to, to to God Almighty and, and when he was a little boy she took him down to the church and she said, You provided me with a son and, and I dedicated him back to you and and he was in the middle of the night he hears he hear, hears voices, but the Bible teaches me he didn't yet know who the Lord was. I got a question for you. Do you really know the Lord? Second, does the Lord really know you? Oh, brother Ed, the Lord knows everybody. Listen, he knows everything about me. Well, I, I got a secret for you. The Bible teaches me that he can't look upon sin. Some of you, he don't know. Some of you, he doesn't know what to do, how you do it, because he's not going to be there. Some folks say, and it kicked away this week, I had the opportunity to talk to a man, I guess this is where part of this came from, and he started, he started asking me questions, and started telling me about things that he read in the Bible, and, and about of other worlds, and of, of this happening, and that happening, and how he, how he had all by himself, that he'd come up and he'd read, he read scriptures and this is what it was. And he says, what do you think about that? I said, I think you've done the best job of twisting the scriptures of anybody I've ever met. Well, what do you mean? I said, scholars have studied God's word for 2,000 years. And you on your own in a matter of four years have straightened everybody up and come up with your own reasoning. Something's wrong somewhere. And I'm going to tell you what it was. Because they don't yet know the Lord. In Daniel, uh, this so happened Sunday school this morning was about Daniel. It says, In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all. You'll find that in Daniel chapter 2. So it says in Daniel chapter 7, it explains what's going to happen. I'd like for you to know what's going to happen about you not knowing the Lord. It said, I beheld till the thrones were cast out and the ancients of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow and a hair of his head was like a pure wool and his wool and his throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire and a fiery stream issued and came forth before him thousands and thousands ministered to him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the judgment was set and the books were opened let me tell you what it says listen to this there's going to come a time when God Almighty is going to say time will be no more this thing called time is going to disappear you don't have time anymore you just have him sitting on the throne and it says 10,000 times 10,000 and 10,000 and 10,000 were before the throne. Judgment is getting ready to come upon you and me 
and we're all going to stand before God Almighty and He is going to open the book. You want to know what He's going to look for. He's going to look to see if you have yet known the Lord. It says that there, there's there's going to be a time when he's going to open the book and he's going to see if your name, listen to this, is written in the Lamb's book of life. You don't have life until Jesus gives it to you. You don't have life until Jesus knows you, until you know him, until you have the opportunity for God Almighty to come into your life and suck with you and you with him. And then he changes your life. He puts you where you need to be. Amen. Now, the second thing you've got to do is once you get to where you know him, then you have to be open to something. And what I'd like for you to do this morning is I'd like for you to consider being open to his word. You see, there's a whole lot of people that will hear, but there's not a whole lot of people going to listen to what God has to say. Amen. Jesus has to be able to speak the thing. Now, my granddaddy used to say this all the time, and, and, and granny, granny would quit back at him, but he'd say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And granny would say, honey, put some salt in these oats. Because it's saying here, there's a whole lot of people who says that you ought to get saved. You say, I know I ought to get saved. And folks say, you can't force them to get saved. We need to put a little salt in your oats. Well, how do I get that? The Bible teaches me faith comes by hearing. Listen to this. And hearing by the word of God. And let me tell you, what the salt is, that's God Almighty's word. Amen. And for Christian folks, it says if a salt is lost in savor, what good is it? Ooh. You can listen, and some of you listen to God's word. Listen, you made a decision that you're going to serve Jesus, that you know that Jesus is the right thing. And then with you not, we even taught it. The Apostle Paul said, what has, what has hindered you? What's entangled you that you're no longer listening? Are you open to God's Word? If you're sitting here this morning and you're lost and you don't know Jesus and Jesus has yet known you, would you be open to what Jesus has to say to you? Would you be open to what Jesus would like to reveal to you? Listen. He wants you to know one thing. I'd like to tell you what it is. It's found in Psalms chapter 46, verse 10. It's pretty verses. Are you listening? It said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the world, in the earth. And Habakkuk 2.10 says this, but the Lord in his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. When it comes to listening to the voice of God, we can say that silence is golden. You know, if you took a little seashell and you held it up to your ear, you know, you to, they'll say, let me listen for the ocean. Let me, let me see if I can hear it. And when I was in school, they, they had a big old, a big old top shell and they, they'd pass around and everybody would listen and you could hear the ocean. Everybody would listen to the ocean. Then we come to God's house of the morning. We're here on Sunday morning, and God says, Why don't you just be silent for a minute and listen? And listen to what I have to say. Listen, you don't know Jesus. You haven't accepted him, either that or you've drifted away, and you're not listening for what he says in his services anymore. You're not listening to what Jesus has for you. You know what? How is it going to be? When Jesus begins a new work in you, he says, he says when you accept him, he will begin. That's what it says. He will begin a good work in you. If you never listen to the job that, that Jesus gives you to do, what good is it going to do you? My goodness. Would Jesus be able to do it? And God spoke to Samuel that night on his bed and he ran into Samuel 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, he ran into Eli and he said, Eli, what do you want? And Eli said, what are you talking about? I heard a voice. Go on back to bed, little boy. And he heard it again. And he ran into Eli the priest. And he says, what do you, what do you want, sir? What do you want? You heard a voice. Yes, I heard a voice. Well, preacher man knew something. He knew what to tell the young man. Why don't you listen to what he says? And when he speaks to you again, say, Lord, what do you want from me? <laughs> Why don't you answer him when he calls? You know what happens? Folks get saved. People come to an altar. They'll turn their heart over to Jesus. They'll say, Jesus, come into my heart and my life. Lord, and I'll serve you. And then after a while, they get entangled by the world. They don't listen anymore. They don't make any error. Listen, it's not important what they do. They'll say, they'll use the excuse, and I, and I throw it up all the time. They'll say, the Lord knows my heart. He really does know your heart. Amen. And if you're not listening, He's not talking. He's not going to talk to somebody that's not going to listen to Him. So, little Samuel lays on his bed, and God speaks again. And he said, what would you have me do, Lord? And the Lord says, I have you to be my prophet. That man that's in there hasn't listened to me anymore. He's failed me. I'm going to make you the prophet. Now, I want you to, I want to tell you something. Here we've got a little boy. This is a young man. He's 11, 12 years old. He goes in and talks to the priest. The priest knows to tell him to listen to the Word of God. You all know, I don't have to tell you this morning, do I? I don't have to make an announcement this morning, do I? That you need to listen to the Word of God. That you need to pay attention to what He says. I really don't need to do that, do I? But yet I do. Listen, some of you coming to the end of life's journey. We, we were talking about riding over here this morning. I've realized one thing in my life. I'm 60 years old. I've come to the end. When the books are open, when I stand before God, what will He say about my life? Will He say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Or will He say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity? So I have to search my life on a daily basis to see where I'm at. So Eli comes into the little boy and, and he says, and did did you hear the voice again? Y yes, sir. Y y yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The voice talked to him. Well, son, what did it say? Oh, oh I really, I really don't want, I really don't want to tell you, Eli. It, it, it ain't good. Eli says, you need, if God tells you something, you need to listen to what he says. He said, priest, he said, I was going to replace you. You don't listen to it anymore. <clears throat> what happens in your life? Serious business. Are you listening? Are your ears open this morning? What happens when Jesus speaks to you? And you know that he's been real in your life. You know that you've asked for things. I, I, I thought I thought of prayers that were answered and little Kathy and, and Ray and her sister and a couple of weeks before that uh, there was somebody else in the family that, that had surgery and God answered the prayers and God heard their prayers and God heard their requests. And you know, you know, I'm gonna tell you something. When we put our prayer requests on there on Sunday morning, I especially like the kids. You know, you never know what's gonna come out of out of their mouths. If you listen real careful, a lot of times you'll say, last week one broke my heart. My daddy, my, my daddy don't have a job and he's he, he going to need some money. Pray, to my, pray my daddy gets a job. Let me tell you something. When that child, child speaks to God, do you think God's listening? If you think he ain't, you got a, <laughs> you got a serious problem in your life. Hosea 2.14 says, I will alert, listen to this, I will alert her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably to her. Let me tell you about your Christian life. I want to make this very plain because I understood this very well this week. There's a time in your life when you accept Jesus. 
that it seems like that you've been led into the wilderness. I, I don't know about you, but there are times in my Christian life, listen, I go hit every lick that I can and I say, I'm going to hit a lick for Jesus and I'm going to do this for him. And I'm just so on fire for Jesus. And somebody like Daniel's come and say, and I get all excited for Jesus or they'll have a revival and somebody will preach. Boy, and I just get on fire and then one day I wake up and I look around and I say, Oh Lord, how have I drifted away from you? And the Bible says, Jesus will speak comfortably to you. Well, why is that? Because it's not him that left. Jesus said, listen to this. Jesus said, I will never, <laughs> I will never leave you. And I will never, puts chill bumps all over me. I will never forsake you. But you know what's happened? You have, are you listening? Listen, are you listening? Are you honestly listening with your heart? You have gone into the wilderness and you're away from God and you're not listening to Him anymore. You're living for the world. You're doing things in the world. And you need to get back to where God can comfortably talk to you. When my kids were growing up, even sometimes I can try to talk to the older ones and they don't listen. And you'll say, if you do this, let me tell you what's going to happen. When they're little, they'll listen to you because if they don't, you take a belt and wear them out. When they're bigger, you talk to them and they say, old man, you have no clue what you're saying. The world has done changed. Well, the world may have changed, but Jesus hasn't. Amen. The Bible says, I will see you again. I got three or four more pages here, but I'm going I'm to say this and then, then, then we're going to wrap this up. Jesus will see you again. Are your ears open? There's going to be a time when the books are going to be open. We're all going to stand before the judgment throne of God, and He's going to see you again. And He's either going to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, or He's going to say, Depart from me, I never knew you. Or He's going to say, Friend. That's what it says. This friend, where's your wedding garment? Oh, Lord. Lord, Lord, I have none. You see, you gave me this brand new robe when I got saved, and it was spotless and it's clean, but it, as I was going down the road, I got into the wilderness, and my, my robe got dirty. I got my briars and brambles, and Lord, I took my robe off. I laid it by the wayside somehow. Brother Dan repeated the scriptures this morning. I, I thought it was neat that it that it matches. It says, if your brother be taken in a fall, those of you which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Let me tell you what it says. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all of sin and come short of the glory of God. If I am fallen today, I may fall tomorrow. And before I get on my high horse, when you mess up, I am ready at any time to forgive because Jesus forgave me. I, I don't have any other way to tell you except in my heart. I know one thing for sure. October the 14th, 1976, I asked Jesus to come into my heart and he did. November the 3rd, stay the 3rd or the 4th. November the 4th, 2012, I asked Jesus to stay in my heart and he does. It says, with whatever judgment you judge, that shall also be judged. With whatsoever judgment you meet, shall be meted into you. In other words, uh, you're going to reap what you sow. What you pass out, you're going to get back. And you know what? We're so easy to say, you've messed up and I ain't forgiving you. And some of you say, I've messed up because you just don't know how far I've gone. I really don't care how far you've gone. I care about how far I've gone. I bring you Jesus' word, and Jesus is the one to be able to bring you out of the wilderness, not me. I wish it was me. I really wish this morning that I could, I could, I could, I could get you tie you up and drag you to the altar and say, "All right, somebody take their belt off, and we're just going to beat them until they say I believe." Every every year, I, I may have told you this already, but somebody sent me pictures just last night of of of, of me when I was about. 
seven years old, and this is what we do. My granddaddy had a 200 acre farm, and, and when he made molasses, he, he'd have dinner on the ground on a, on, a, on a Saturday. And they'd start Friday killing chickens, and they'd make us sit on the bridge. We'd, we'd, we'd pour hot water on them chicken feathers and pluck them, and they'd stink. Listen, and they made chicken, and they made chicken, and they made chicken. And the next day, they'd have, they'd, have, they'd have services, and every preacher in the valley would come and preach. And listen, people would sing, people would dance, people would run. They had two or three hundred people there at the, at the dinner on the ground at Granddaddy's house. And lo and behold, I, I can't remember every year of having that somebody didn't get saved. And when somebody gets saved, they had a place down the creek, they go ahead and have a baptizing when everybody was gone. All of us kids would get together. I guess it was about 50 of us kids. And we'd have a baptism service. My cousin Trish passed away this year, and Trish was my favorite target. And what we do is we take Trish down to the water. This is a fact. And we'd hold Trish down and say, do you believe? And she'd come up and say, no. I said, Doctor, again. We'd hold her down a little bit longer, bring her up, and say, Do you believe? No. We'd hold her down a little bit longer until we saw bubbles come up, bring her up, and she'd say, I believe. <laughs> I wish it could be that way getting you saved this morning. You know what I mean? I really wish we could force you to listen to God's Word and see what it says. But you have to listen on your own. So how do you listen on your own? I like to tell you how. Romans 10, 8, 9, 10 says, But what saith it? The word is not that even thy heart and thy mouth that the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised thee from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In one place it says, My little children, I would that you sin not, but if you do sin, you have an advocate. With the Father, some of you are out in the wilderness. Some of you have really gotten off track. Listen, if Jesus comes back to get to church and He takes you over there, is He going to be able to say, "Are your robes white?" Is He going to say, "Friend, where's your garment?" Are you going to say, "Lord, I've left it in the wilderness"? The Bible says the man looked at Him and said, "Lord, I have none." And He looked at the other ones, and I hope it's not me that He picks. I hope it's not your brother or your sister. And he looks at him and he says, bind their hands and their feet, cast them into outer darkness where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Well, why would you say that, Brother Ed? Because if I don't warn you, there's nobody going to. You see, you have to listen to God, but I told you before, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You have to make a decision, really, what you want out of your life. When the books are opened, where are you going to stand? Are you where you need to be? Let's all stand. I'd like for all of you to bow your heads just very quickly. Honest question. Your head's bowed. If you're here this morning and you're not living for Jesus, if you've been slipped into the wilderness, I need to talk to the church before I need to talk to the lost. you slipped into the wilderness and you'd really like to be saved and your family's saved, and you'd really like to get back on track, would you just put, raise your hand and put it right back down? God bless that hand. Is there another hand? I'd really like to get back where I need to be, Brother Ed. I really would. You're here and you don't know Jesus. You haven't accepted him as your Savior. Would you really would like to have that pretty robe that he's got you? Would you raise your hand and say this morning, I'd like to ask Jesus to come into my heart, but it's, it's really hard. But I know that I need Jesus. Would you raise your hand and say, church, start praying for me that I'll get saved before it's too late. Would you do that? We're going to sing one verse of song. And you'll have the opportunity, if you've been out in the wilderness, to come and get everything right. If you've never known Jesus, you've got the opportunity to accept Him as your Savior. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but... You know, Jesus was put on the cross of Calvary. He laid down his life and he gave it freely. They took him off that cross and they put him in a tomb. Which says, the Bible says, where no man had ever lay. The devil thought he'd won. They put him in that tomb. First day came, nothing happened. Second day came, nothing happened. On the third day, God the Father said, Son, get up. And Jesus got up and defeated death 
and hell and the grave. He, he, he says if you believe that God the Father raised you from the dead, you confess with your mouth, you would say, would you like to do that this morning? Would you like to do that? God bless you. In the back, Brother Dan has come all the way from Chattanooga, West Virginia. I, I hope that you've enjoyed this.